welcome to Arts Talk. We're here at the community, Common Ground Community Cafe in Sherwood Park. Nice. Again. And guess who's with us? Guess who's with us? Heidi. Okay, here. wait, 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 wait. Just Terry's here. Hi, okay. Guys. This is a very old joke, but it never gets old. Um, and it's an inside joke. A lot of these people oh, have no idea yeah. what we're talking about. Mm -mm. Nobody okay, does. But just, just, just for the record, I'd just like a special recognition, if at all possible, from you lovely people over here to recognize that Heidi is here. Shall we give her a hand, please? Yes, let's hear Yay! it for Heidi. Yay, Heidi, beautiful. Hello. Beautiful. So, so let me get this straight. Thank you very much. That's so awesome. So let me get this straight. Yes. There was no parking problem. No, no, I was here before you. <laughs> I was here before Cliff. Cliff came in. We started late because of this man right here. Not She's me. not going to let you live that down. No. not going to let me live it down, no. No, for the record, in case you don't know, uh, we regularly torture Heidi. Well, one, because we love her. And secondly, that's the most important reason. And Aww. secondly, and secondly, because she never made it to a fringe play. She never did. <laughs> you were supposed to let that go. I came to the festival this summer, and it was decided that no longer would Heidi be made fun of for not coming to the fringe play. I know, but you haven't been here in a few weeks, so we have to rejuvenate the old, you know, the old gate. We right? had to bring I it don't back. Think so we couldn't no. do it when you weren't here. <laughs> I disagree. You disagree. All right. Okay. So again, well, for our viewers, I'm Bill. That's Cliff, and this we think is Heidi. Is Heidi. 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 And in honor of Heidi, in on, here this out. In honor of Heidi, we have like an excellent show planned. Yes, we have we some do. amazing in guests honor of me? that already were on the show, like amazing guests, like Good Improv. I mean, those guys were amazing. They are and amazing. They yes. always are. And my standard, standard comment is they're called good improv, but of course, they're great improv. Great. I think you guys should change your name I do personally. Need to, I do need to say something about that. Shoot. As you know, an episode or so back, we were playing good improv. Right. You were just when I was Dan. <laughs> right. But there was an issue with dogs. Right. And Dan apparently hated dogs. Right. And, but then by the end of the last episode, it was resolved. we had people in tears because right. it was resolved. Because Dan now apparently loves dogs. Nice. And so we had to bring out the, the Kleenex because it was such a... Dan, oh, Dan. no, Dan wants to come up and speak with us. Okay, but is this still the case, though? I'd like to say just one more thing about dogs. As you remember, last episode, yes. I resolved my yes. troubles I had with dogs. And I've actually recently adopted a dog. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a few problems with it, though. <laughs> Uh, it, it, well, it claws up the furniture a lot. <laughs> wow. It's constantly making this meowing noise. That's I, an interesting I take it out dog. for a walk. It just wants to lay there and roll around. So I'm having a lot of problems with it. So <laughs> if you guys got any tips on that, I'd love to hear them. Go back uh, to the pound and yeah. return it and get a different animal. Or maybe get a dog and not a cat. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think there's a difference there, Dan. That's between not... a dog and a cat. Sorry, that's not what a dog is? Apparently not. Oh. And by the way... I have some thinking to do about what I said last week then. I <laughs> you, you have grown a lot of hair since the last time you were here. I have, yes. Yes. Um, do you shed as much as your dog then? Well, it's really, really a shed machine. You know, you run your <laughs> hand down its back, whole hand comes away covered in fur. Your dog's actually white, isn't it? Yeah, it's pure That's white. That's where you got all that pure hair Pure white. From. That's right. Yeah. I'm so. just speaking from jealousy. All right. Well, uh... I guess I will be rethinking my stance on dogs, seeing as I actually thought they were cats. I'm can, sorry. Can we take your wig and put it on Cliff? No, no please. I think that would be a fantastic <laughs> idea. Who wants to see that, huh? Yeah, I think we would all love to see yeah, Cliff. Yeah, I think everybody wants to see please. that. <laughs> Here you go, Cliff. Thank you. Let's see it. Finally, the glare will be gone. Go. I uh, hate dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you look great, Cliff. Okay, okay, all right. Now, I don't normally watch these shows, right? Because I don't like watching me, but now I'm going to have to. <laughs> and we do have a very good show coming up. Yes. Uh, so, who do we have for guests tonight? Wait a minute, Club? though. It's been a long time since I've ever done this. So. Okay. Let, let it flip it. <laughs> Anyways. So, who, that's awesome. There you go, sir. Thank you for humoring me. So, who do we have coming up on Art Stock tonight? Um... Well, we have this wonderful gentleman who seems to be involved with this rather huge project called Rutherford Manor. Awesome. I know, right? So it's not Mr. Rutherford, because that's not his name, but it's Mr. Rutherford and all the associated little Rutherfords, right? <laughs> but he talks about all these associated little Rutherfords, but his name is Brandon Rhines, right? Please tell me that, no? Seriously, dude? What do you mean? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> So Preston is with us. Preston is with us. Yes. And we also have Laurel Brown with us as well from the okay. Artfully Yours See, School of Fine Art. This is why live is an issue. Yes. This is why Cliff and Coffee live are is an, an issue. issue. Right? 
CNC. La, 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 la. Yes. Okay. And Heidi just stands in the middle quietly and lets us do all the talking. I know, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. Would anyway, you like to say I'm, something just enjoying, before we... I'm just enjoying. Okay. So <laughs> let's just step back here and say Preston's here. Preston yep. is here. I should have just said Laura's that from the beginning. Here. Laura's here. And Laura's here. With a wonderful art school that just opened up yes. here in Short Park. In Short Park? Yeah. Yes. Nice. Brand, awesome. brand new. Ready Brand to go. New. So maybe we should get on with the show. Let's I think it. we should. <laughs> Let's do that before we get out of hand. I'm already out of hand. You are. You are. Let's do it. Okay, All continuing right. on. We'll be right back <laughs> after this. Welcome back, Arts Talk. Today we have Laura Brown from Artfully, I'm going to try to say this, Artfully Yours School of Fine Art. Did I get right? That's yeah, well done, Heidi. Wow, look at me go. Welcome, Laura. I'm going to give you my microphone, and I'll just chill over here, okay? <laughs> you relax, Cliff. You can, have, you can have a break now. After the introduction, man, come on. So, as I had already said, the school just opened up. Can you tell us um, when you opened up? I just opened about the middle of August and started classes in September, so a couple months. That's Very awesome. Brand new. How did you decide and start up your school? I had one in Victoria a few years ago. Um, my mom and I both are into the art. She also had one in Victoria. And so I moved out here to Sherwood Park a few years ago and kind of thought about it for a while. It took me a while to decide to do it. And then um, my mom moved out here and she helps me out, so I just decided to do it. So Give it a try. is this a school that's available for all ages? Ages five and up. Ages five and up. Yeah. Excellent. So classes again for all levels. So if you're a brand new beginner to art? Correct. All levels, beginner, advanced. Um, we also do portfolio preparation for university or college entrance. Um, so what kinds of art do you guys, do you, have a, do you specialize in anything or like what kind of mediums do you work with? We do kind of everything. Um, for children, we do Watercolor um, paint, watercolor pencil, drawing, um, pastel, sculpture, and then for adults, they can do all of that as well as oil paint. So well, pretty much anything. And so, what's, uh, so what's your background? I have a Bachelor of Arts and I did a Fine Arts elective. And then I've been with my mom, I've been exposed to it for my whole life. Um, I did some courses in university and from there I've just kind of done my own thing and sort of developed it as I went along and I did like I mentioned do a, have a school in Victoria for a couple of years that I taught so and then you came to Alberta and then I came to Alberta for the lovely weather <laughs> I was gonna say you left so Victoria lovely. to come to Alberta <laughs> so do you also do shows at the school so do the students have an opportunity to display all of their work there or how does that work not at the school, um, just because of space, it's it's a little smaller, it's not really set up for a show, but I am looking to try and find a place where I can do a show and have the students display their work. We've My mom and I have both done that in previous years, and they have always really enjoyed it. They get to invite people to come and see their stuff hanging up and framed and displayed. So I'm looking for a place to try and do that this year. That must be one that must be one of the biggest motivations, right? When they, when they see them, when they see their own creation hanging on a wall or in a gallery, that must be fantastic for them. It must give them that juice, right? It does, and then they get to invite people to come and see it, right? And it's it's like their own little show. They really like it. And there must yeah. be a sense of accomplishment if you get somebody who's a brand new beginner, mm. who's maybe like me, who barely draws a stick person, you know, and they come in and, and all of a sudden they've gone from this level, and now they're slowly working up this way and it must be a sense of accomplishment for you as well for both I think yeah, yeah and we we teach it's a progression so it's not um, it's not like a paint night so we keep our classes quite small so that we give everybody individual guidance and so we can have we keep into a maximum of seven and then we can have everybody in the class doing different projects at different levels and they just progress at their own level and that way then they can work on something that they like and not have to do the same thing the guy beside them is doing so like Cliff said, someone who is artfully challenged, um, if we were to enroll, uh, that would be, we'd be totally welcome. Like anybody can. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. No background, or if you've done some, or if you have quite a bit, and just there's a few other things you want to learn, or if you just want to advance to a different level, or yeah, any any background. And evening classes for adults? Oh, yes. Um, Saturdays and then Tuesday and Thursday evenings. So is that what you, in regards to your clientele right now, is that are you seeing more adults, or is it a lot of kids? Mostly teenagers, actually. Oh, wow. I have a couple little kids. I have one girl who's seven, one who's nine, and the rest are around 13, 14. So whereabouts are you located? We are on Provincial Avenue. It's just kind of in behind Millennium Recreation Center, um, corner of Provincial and mm -hmm. Pembina. Okay. It's by Budget Blinds there yeah. in the same building. And so if someone wanted to enroll, is there like a waiting list or is there a website that they can go on to to sign up? Usually we have people come in. I do have a website. It's artfullyyoursschooloffineart.ca. Um, to sign up, though, we usually have them come in. Just because we like to meet them, they can take a look around. They can meet my mom and I. And then we also like them to just maybe bring, if they've done anything in the past, to bring a couple pictures and we can just kind of get an idea. Because we usually like to try and start people from the point they're at mm -hmm. and then take them forward from there. Um, so you said seven people per class, and how long does a, a session last? Like, is it three weeks, four weeks, six weeks? It's ongoing, so they can do it okay. as long as they like, and they just progress to different levels. So they would start working from a picture, and then they could go into working from a three-dimensional object into making up their own composition, into doing abstract. So it's just, I mean, my mom and I both had people who came for years just because there was stuff they wanted to keep learning. And so then in, say, one class, do you have um, each of your students working on something completely different, or are they all working, like, they're all work doing watercolor, or they're all doing sculpting, like... No, nope. they'll no. do their own project, and okay. that's why, why we keep them small and enough that my mom and I can go around and help everybody individually, and so they can, we can have one kid doing sculpture, one person doing watercolor paint, one person doing acrylic, one person doing pastel, um, different levels, and that's... And that's and then they 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 enjoy what they're doing, right? right? They don't have to work on something they don't want to be doing. So which <laughs> for kids, be creative mayhem, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Sorry, I keep turning my back to you. <laughs> so just before we we wrap up, um, are there certain times people s should register, or is it ongoing? It's ongoing, and I do have space still available now, so okay. um, they can visit the website and or give us a call. Um, like I said, I usually get people to come down. I don't really have a registration link on the website. Right. So. Excellent. Do you have a Facebook page as well, or just just the I website? I do. Yes. Okay. It's. Oh, I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> brand. Is it brand new? It is. So if you search uh, artfully yours, yeah. Would it be under? Yeah. Okay. It should come up. Excellent. Well, Laura, thanks so much for being on Arts Talk. Really appreciate it. For our viewers looking to learn to do art, if you're brand new, make sure you go check out Laura's studio out here in Sherwood Park. Check out the website. Search her uh, for her on Facebook as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. And we're Strong back, like back to Arts dream. Talk. Um, what about that, eh? Laura from yes. Artfully Yours in Sherwood Park, a brand spanking new facility yes. um, for your creative man meanderings, uh, both, uh, both uh, brand new creative meanderings, talented uh, creative meanderings um, do check it out artfully yours you know, and I can hear five year olds can draw way better than me I know <laughs> I'm in trouble I just saw some and you'll see some on the film obviously but yeah. um, that's amazing Laura that's, that's, yeah. a, that's amazing talent and uh, what a great facility to have in Sherwood Park oh for sure uh, now, I'd like to introduce you to uh, somebody that is um, really kind of rocking the Edmonton world. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and uh, then I'll introduce, of course, other people to him. Uh, Preston, how are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Iwasiak, am I saying that correct? You are saying that correct. Preston, it's a pleasure to meet you. I've met you once before in the wonderful haunted um, uh, expo display. I'm looking forward to going to the haunted um, uh, tour, which you're about to tell us about. But first, in line with my earlier introductions, let me introduce you. On the far, far, far uh, right of you over there is Heidi. And uh, sitting right next to Heidi, of course, is Bill. And... Uh, Hi guys. Did, did you did you forget sorry. your glasses? I, I must have. Yeah, I'm sorry. I so. Well, I, I just wanted to in the same theme as the beginning, you know. Mm. Anyway, Preston, 
welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Um, you're rocking the art world. You're rocking the Rutherford Manor world here in Edmonton. Uh, why don't you tell us whatever you wish to tell us right now? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just opened it right up. <laughs> There's right so up. much to tell. What you can and what you can't what tell. You can. uh, what I can and what I can't. That's can. right. Uh, well, uh, for those who don't know what Rutherford Manor is, right. uh, we're basically an up-and-coming pop culture brand uh, based, uh, basically created here in Edmonton. Uh, it's based uh, on characters that I created several years ago for Rutherford Manor Haunted House, nice. which is a nonprofit haunted house in South Edmonton, and mm-hmm. we raised money for Second Chance Animal Rescue and for cool, the food cool, bank. Cool, 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 right? And uh, just a few years ago, uh, well, basically, it would have been about two years ago, as I was creating these characters and we were starting to promote the haunt, I realized I was kind of onto something. Nice. And I figured, okay, you know. I think pop culture is probably ready for another really messed up macabre <laughs> family of horror, and uh, Rutherford Manor was born. Was so. born, nice. Yeah, and and so you you guys are writing episodes. Yes, correct for television. For television, right? yes. And yes. besides the episodes that you're writing for television, of course, there's a lot of underground work going on that nobody sees. Um, obviously, yes. uh, planning for the future. Um, yes. But you have a card game. We have a card game. We have novels. We have art. Uh, we have. Ooh, we have t-shirts. t-shirts. Actually, there's some people in the audience here wearing some of our t-shirts. Wow. Woo-hoo! Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> thanks guys. Woo. Um, and basically just building an entire brand right. uh, around Rutherford Manor. Uh, we have been working very hard on television. Uh, right. last year we filmed a, a teaser trailer. Uh, basically designed to start conversation on selling the series. Nice. Uh, it did that. It actually won the Ampia Rosie Award for Best Fantastic. Promotional Production. Fantastic. Yes, I heard that. Uh, so uh, you know, we've we've had a, a you know a really really good time and adventure, <laughs> you know, basically building the brand. Building and, the brand. And ultimately, you know, with the novels, uh, we have a new novel out uh, called The White Hand with Con Lavery. Right, with Con Lavery, yeah. yeah. I actually got that book at the expo. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, this actually, the next book in that series will be out in February. Nice. It's called Fire, Pain, and Ruin. And uh, we have, of course, been working on a card game called The Black Altar. The Black Altar. Uh, with, yes. With, uh, with an, I can't get away from mentioning this guy's name. With an amazing artist. He's everywhere, just like yes. you're everywhere. Jamie Pruden. <laughs> Jamie Pruden. Jamie, brother, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's everywhere. He I loves mean, you really, back, man. I know. He's everywhere. I'm telling you. And, yeah. and no, but I mean, you know, Rutherford Manor is, just, is, is literally, in my mind anyway, a movement in this area. I mean, uh, it's Halloween, so I can say this. We can't swing possibly his dead cat <laughs> without without running into something to do with Rutherford Manor. I think that is so amazing, Preston. Well, thank you. Thank so you. before we continue, because it sounds like there's so much to unpack <laughs> with this, can you tell us a little bit about the story of Rutherford Manor? Well, the story of Rutherford Manor takes place uh, basically around 1915. It's, a, it's about a family uh, that lives in Rutherford Manor uh, in a small town of Rowley, uh, Illinois just nice. outside of Chicago. And uh, basically, they're very much a cursed family. Uh, they're always trying to uh, you know, become normal, uh, come to the light. <laughs> they fail over and over again, uh, basically because they're heavily cursed by a demon called Manat, who's actually right there. Nice. Uh, she's a central uh, evil force in the entire Rutherford Manor uh, narrative. And uh, this family, uh, basically, uh, it, with the writing that's going on, it, it's all very character-driven narrative. Where you have you know you have different relationships and love triangles and <laughs> and horror and uh, government intrigue and and, and, and and the mob like there's just so many aspects to uh, to the Rutherford Manor story uh, but basically it, it, it centers around uh, two characters uh, Spalding Savage and Father Lorcan Connolly uh, so basically protagonist and antagonist and uh, Spalding of course is trying to raise his girls his twin girls uh, in this very oh uh, just <laughs> messed up environment uh, and uh, he keeps running into all sorts of snags with people like Father Lorcan who is just hell-bent on controlling the town and just taking out Spalding and there's just it's so, it's so uh, complicated and so in, vast. convoluted. Yes, yes. It's so vast, and yeah. and there are so many people in Edmonton in the in the arts community involved. I mean, a lot of you know my Facebook page. I, I don't think I can scroll a single uh, page on my Facebook without something to do with Rutherford Manor. That uh, means I'm doing my job. Coming right. up, that means that <laughs> yeah, means Preston is doing job, his job. You well, see it all everywhere now. Well, there's which so is much great. talent involved in this. The, 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 the 
talent pool that you have put together for this, I'm assuming that, that you've put this together because that's what everybody tells me, is remarkable. Yes, yes. We've been very blessed with the, the type of people right. from artists and writers. And musicians. Uh, and musicians. I mean, we have, you know, we have uh, Daniel Martin Daniel's in the audience. Daniel's in the audience yeah. here, too. Uh, you know, right there. Hey. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's right. Woo! So uh, Daniel, uh, of course, uh, formed Daniel Martin in the Infamous. In the Infamous, yeah. He did a, a theatrical rock album based on Rutherford Manor based characters. On Rutherford Manor. He has a concert coming up here in mid-November. The it's, 16th. Uh, the 16th yeah. of November. Go uh, see it. You guys will love it. And that's at the Rec Room South Side. So yeah, right crazy too. things going on. And, <laughs> and Daniel's been around forever. He's he's one of the originals. That's yeah, been he looks pretty old. For a long time. So. <laughs> well, sorry, dude. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am actually. <laughs> Listen, I had hair for a little while. Thank you. <laughs> the, the people behind the camera don't know that apparently, apparently. Daniel is better than you because he has hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'll buy that, actually. <laughs> but no, that's Not remarkable. That's you, you, you put this wonderful artistic group of people together, and everybody seems to be moving towards a, a, the, the same goal, which is to make this uh, uh, you know, a massive happening in Alberta. Yes. Yes. And not only Alberta, you're obviously planning on moving um, outside this realm and promoting this in, in, in greater parts of the world, so to speak. Yes, we, we have fan base that's growing uh, all around the world. Uh, you know, UK, Germany, Japan, <laughs> wow. US. Um, in fact, uh, tomorrow uh, we're on uh, 101.9 uh, in Cape Breton Radio. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, yeah, there's an interview happening <laughs> on awesome. that too. That's awesome, uh, and uh, and that's actually came through uh, someone who's in the card game, a DJ. So, a de- is that yeah. right? Yeah. So, Preston, just before we wrap up, yes, for the ver- maybe the three or four viewers that are watching that don't know about Rutherford <laughs> Man- know. Manor. <laughs> How do they get more info? Uh, th- th- it's very easy, actually. You can find us on Facebook uh, just by searching Rutherford Manor. Uh, uh, we are at at Rutherford Manor official. And uh, our website, which has pretty much everything you want to know at www.rutherford-manor.com. Nice. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you've done a fantastic job with how you've branded it. Uh, we see it everywhere now, and it looks just awesome. So and, it's and, exciting and to see where it's going to go. If you weren't at Expo, right? Um, we were at Expo and we went through the little haunted section and display because mm-hmm. they had you know you had a great display at Expo, mm-hmm. like an, an amazing display. Um, I don't, how many how many booths did you guys have together? Uh, well, we had uh, Con Lavery with us. Right. Uh, we were there. Jamie Pruden was there, Pruden. and Theater Garage. We worked quite closely with Theater Garage closely as well. Them. So we were all in a super booth. Of and Neil Chase. Square feet. Neil Chase was there as well. And Neil was there as well. Yeah, yeah he, Neil's actually one of our writers. Right. Yeah, uh, I got for his the book show. too. Award-winning, right. award-winning screenwriter. Yeah. Look at uh, this. Hey, award-winning writers. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's uh, it was great, and uh, we, we had a lot of people come through, and it was awesome. And very quickly, speaking of coming through, mm-hmm. uh, what about the haunted house? What about tomorrow night? Well, uh, the, of course, today being the 30th, right. uh, uh, <laughs> Devil's Night, right? So uh, tomorrow is Halloween, and uh, we're going to be putting on a big show at Rutherford Manor Haunt. Uh, we're expecting probably 1,500, 2,000 people on that. Nice. Whereabouts in Edmonton? It's uh, 1906 Robertson Crescent. Robertson Crescent, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Preston, cool. thanks so much. Thank we're you for having me. excited to see what's going to happen next for you. We'll be watching. <laughs> we'll be paying attention. We might have to get you back on the show down the road. For okay. updates. Yeah. Sure. And we wish sure. you and Rutherford Manor nothing but good things, man. Yes, Thank you. For Thank sure. You. Appreciate so it. So coming Thank up you. after this, Good Improv will be back doing some events for us. Great Improv. Great Improv. Jeez, we'll you know, back. Bill, sorry, you sorry, really ought to get names correct. Sorry. Well, <laughs> I think Dan just threw me off again at the I beginning know, right? of the show with this whole dog thing. I know. Okay. So anyway, we'll this be right back. There seems to be a lot of mistaken identity in this <laughs> show. There is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after okay. this with some events. Some events. The events are brought to you by the Edmonton Muse, Edmonton's online magazine. Visit edmontonmuse.ca. Well, we start over here with the first event with Dan. Well, that sounds like a great idea, Jordan. I'm happy to share that event with you here. I'm here to tell you about the Winter Burlap Wreath Class. Now, I know most people, when they think of wreaths, they're thinking pine needles, maybe white pine needles. I'm here to tell you about a burlap wreath class. So you can come and learn how to make a burlap wreath. It only costs you $60, and that's going to include the burlap, the frame, and a bow and greenery. Now, the price of burlap is actually pretty high, so that's a pretty good deal on that. There's going to be an extra cost for mini lights. If you want lights or a sign, it's going to be a little bit more. And if you want to register, there's a $40 non-refundable deposit. It's required, okay? 
So if you want to go to that, that's going to happen at 4 Flamingo Drive on November 6th at 7 o'clock. You can find their Facebook page at facebook.com slash events slash 520-898-785152546. That's awesome. Thanks, Dan. It's easy to remember. I like that. That's why it's easy, easy Facebook to remember. I like that. Our next event is New Music, New Voices number 3 at New Music Edmonton. This is November 7th from 7.30 until 11.30 p.m. And it's at the Aviary, which is at 9314 111th Ave, Northwest. The door is open at 7.30, show's at 8.30. It's $10 in advance at YEG Live or $15 at the door. You can go to their Facebook and you can check out the new music, new voices events at the Avery. It's a new series in partnership with the Avery featuring artists from Edmonton. Are you curious about what new sounds are being created in town or are you interested in hearing the new direction of some of your favorite local musicians and where they're moving into? Well, this is the place to be. It features artists including Caitlin Cian Richards on viola, electronics, and multimedia. Caitlin Richards grew up in a family steeped in the arts. Her background has included art and museum studies at the University of Alberta and Grant McEwen University. Her diverse work in the community has included being artist in residence at the Ortona Armory and numerous exhibitions and festivals. She is also violist, violist or violist, one of those. It's a violist. I, I don't think she's the violist. That doesn't sound right. For the experimental string duo, The Olm, and hosts CJSR's Imaginary Landscapes, Caitlin's performances at New Music New Voices uses recordings of household objects, viola, voice, and video to build up a sonic and visual system representing breath, teeth, lungs, and circulation. Very cool. There's also Virginie La, La Liberté on violin. With a passion for new works and collaborations, Virginie La Liberté is a recent addition to the Edmonton scene, and we are excited to present her Edmonton debut. She has performed in numerous festivals and performs regularly with bassist Andrew Lawrence and the clarinetist Celia Tang. Virginie's program will include premieres of new works by Andrew Lawrence and Gabo Champagne, a virtuistic solo by Alice Hong and a short improvisation. Welcome to Edmonton, Virginie. Welcome. Also, Leah Harmon and Brenda McGrath, saxophone and keyboard, Tom Merklinger, Live Electronics. Tom Merklinger's work includes an array of practices plus work with many local organizations such as Crispy, Beams, Chinook Festival, and Faba. In addition to electronic, acoustic, and traditional music, they produce house and techno tracks. Tom's improvised work for this show will combine synthesized sounds, voices, and field recordings, and their work will display wide-ranging folk and religious vocal influences and the minimal sustained sounds of composers such as Elaine Radig, Phil Nyblock, and Morton Feldman. Also, Isaac Earle will be doing electronic music. Currently studying composition and theory at the University of Alberta, Isaac Earle also has a background in saxophone performance. His practice includes electroacoustic text and graphics-based compositions. He'll perform two electroacoustic works at New Music, New Voices. Rhododendron an ambient environment of whatever you believe it to be. And I don't breathe underwater. That's not just a fact, it's also a work looking at the struggling how, of how distances between words and people are more alike than we like to admit. Wow. I appreciate go. that that was kept really concise so we can remember all the information. I felt it was my job just to nod and, and, and support you in that. What do you have for us, Justin? I have uh, the much shorter, uh, but no less important, uh, the Métis Beating Basics Edmonton. Now, this is really cool. This is on November 10th at the Grow Center uh, co-working and teaching space, November 10th, 6 p.m. through 9 uh, to 9 p.m. Uh, it's a cultural immersion uh, in the art of Métis uh, beadwork. You know, the cool, uh, if you've ever been to the, uh, the museum, See the, uh, the cool flower patterns they make with the beads there? Well, this is your chance to not just keep something in a museum, but actually have it living in front of you in an immersive cultural thing. So if you want to learn how to do really cool Métis bead work, uh, check it out. Uh, tickets are $40. Uh, and uh, yeah, you get to, it'll be uh, interactive. You get to... Uh, to learn how to do this. Does that $40 include the burlap? Or? Uh, it does not include any burlap. Okay. The but it includes burlap all the up. beads. Uh, you can also check them out on Facebook events at number uh, 2431 
406-117-130256. I like that they keep these so concise and memorable. But uh, just uh, Métis Beadworking, November 10th. Please check it out, because that's an awesome thing to do. Well, I bet all those events are going to pop up on the screen anyway, so have a great day, everyone. I have no control over that. I don't know if they will. That's awesome. Back to Bill, Cliff, and Heidi. We're back. Thanks to Good Improv for doing all of those Sorry, events. Sorry, I'm just doing. I'm just giving Trevor what he gives me all the time. He goes like this. Likes to point at us. Those the, events had tons of numbers. They did, but Jordan had just a ton to say. Yeah. <laughs> and did you notice Jordan's hair? <laughs> Jordan had long hair. He told me it's a new shampoo. No. You should seriously. start using it, dude. It it grew so I bet it's quickly. Argon You've been oil. holding out on me, man. I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Going. Where did you get that shampoo from? <laughs> Don't use that. <laughs> you got a real deal on it. That's why it was on the clearance shelf, Jordan. <laughs> that dog shampoo. <laughs> the dog, dog shampoo. shampoo that's right. Turned, and what happened? It turned the dog into a cat. It's a pretty yeah. good shampoo, I'd say. I, I don't oh, no, think this Jordan, is FDA approved Yes, Jordan, shampoo. you can join us. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, you may. <laughs> wow, look at the hair. Yeah, my hair is Still jealous. Oh, thanks. That's, that's nice of you, Cliff. Thank you. My dog was recently stolen. If anyone has seen it, I'd just like to describe it quickly. It scratches a lot of furniture, makes a meowing sound, and it likes to just lay around a lot. If anyone's seen my dog, if you could contact the team at Arts Talk here, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. You know, there's something funny about that because I thought Dan mentioned something, but he was in disguise tonight. Maybe that's why. <laughs> He didn't want anybody to know who he was. He didn't know exactly. <laughs> Good <laughs> show, Bill. It was an awesome show. Again, thank you to Preston and to Laura for being on the show. Nice, and Again, thank you to Heidi for showing thank up. Thank you for Heidi for actually being here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> she actually found a parking spot and pulled in. I did. And, th and thank you to all the lovely people that showed yeah. up. Yeah, great uh, audience just, tonight. Just, just to sit and listen to the wonderful uh, Preston over there. And, of course, uh, Laura. Um, you know, it's very nice when you have wonderful faces to look at, smiling and laughing and all that wonderful stuff. Yeah. So thank you very much. As opposed to not wonderful As faces. opposed to. <laughs> Listen, I've had a lot of grumpy people in my life, okay? <laughs> so what do we always talk about at the end of the show? The arts The talk, Facebook page. Facebook page, which yeah. we are well over 1,000 likes now. Well over 1,000 likes now. Awesome. Yes. So to all of you who liked it, thank you so much. Yes. And to all of you who did not like it, Remember, the threat is always alive. Cliff will I will show up come at your door. knocking on the door. Yes. I, I did say I'll bring cookies. You so, did. So it's more of a promise than a threat, yes. right? <laughs> I, would, I would take him up on that, especially if, there's, if they are Terry's cookies. Terry's cookies, that's Very right. Good. Yeah, that's right. Terry, we miss you. Yes. Okay, so uh, please Wait. do... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a real harsh <laughs> stop. Heidi just... Maybe we should step aside. <laughs> Heidi's obviously got something to say. It's, it's yes, dear. Go to Instagram yes, too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> At Arts Talk EDM Edmonton. Uh, thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> we got to push that social media. <laughs> okay, so go to the Facebook page, like it, of course, and this these programs will be uh, will be linked. Um, the YouTube stations will be linked. Yes. All that type of jazz. Um, all the magic happens behind the camera. You bet. Thanks to our crew, Eric and uh, Trevor, here tonight. Thanks, folks. Appreciate that. Eric, who likes to hide behind the camera. I, I think know. we had him on the show once. That's right. Eric, we're well, going to have to have you on the show again ago. sometime. Yeah, we'll have to get Eric in front of the camera again at some I point. <laughs> Peaks Kevin. around the corner. All right. All right. Good show, you guys. Great show. Yes, thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. We really appreciate that. And, uh, hey, let's do you it in bet. one month. We'll see you next time. All right. I'll be there Ciao. this time. <laughs> She'll thanks, be there Heidi. this time. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome.